kind of like okay. get your space. Yep. That doesn't no problem. All right, let's start with some of our journalists, it's, uh, written journalists this evening. Thank you. Caleb, you want to go? Sure, sure. Um, some of the guys have just been talking about how big it was at Demir back there, um, obviously not only from a, from a team and morale standpoint, but we scored the game winner. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious, you know, how, how big was that for you guys? And then just going forward, how much do you think you might have to lean on, on Demir now that he is, you know, looking close to 100%? Yeah, I, I think, again, I think Demir is, is a natural leader for this group. Uh, you know, I think uh, as far as what we're trying to do tactically, um, emotionally, managing moments in games, does a really good job leading the press, um, you know, I think is really important. And as far as, you know, I. <clears throat> Again, I, I'm, I come from a place of tempering expectations. Uh, you know, I think it's no one understands what it's like to to be out for a whole year. You know, I, I think uh, the fact that he got himself in that position and scored that goal is is um, vintage Demir Krylak. Um, but but again, I think it's going to be a, a, it's a long season, and and so what we have to do is manage his minutes, um, manage the expectations, so that he can play free and he can be who he is. And then looking at a guy like Rubio, who didn't, wasn't with you guys on the weekend, but uh, you know figures to be part of the ramp up, and then go this week uh, in Seattle. Uh, I guess what are you what are you expecting that he can add this week that you weren't able to have last week? Well, you know, I think it's for, for me, it's really about competition up front. You know, we have Danny Rubio and Anderson. I thought Anderson had a, a top game last last week, um, and, and so we have some some options moving forward. You know, I think Rubio's had a bright preseason. Unfortunately, he hasn't played a lot with the first group just as we prepared for the first game of the season, um, obviously anticipating that he was out. So, you know, I think he's been sharp, um, and, and we'll see how the week goes and, and, and see how we line up. A uh, bit of a rough first half in that game against Vancouver. What did you say to the group at halftime to, to get such a dramatic turnaround? Oh, <clears throat> you know, I, again, I said, <clears throat> excuse me, I said this after the game. There's. There's a couple ways to affect the game at halftime. One is tactically, and, and two is with intensity, right? And, and with that intensity, it's also focus and focusing on the details. And so as you saw in the first half, when, when a couple balls go awry and they spring counters, dangerous counters, everyone, the natural tendency of a soccer player is to not put themselves in position to have that happen again. And in doing so, you create more of the momentum that you're trying to, trying to evade, right? So, it, it really starts and ends with our, with our with two central midfielder players. If they are getting positions quickly, if they are moving the ball with uh, intention, as opposed to, I don't want this to be a bad pass, but here's a great pass, you take it, and the other guy goes, here's a great pass, you take it. Now you begin to inspire players with the sound of your pass. I know this, is, this sounds crazy, but it's, it's real. And the ball carries an energy with it. And it carries either doubt and a lack of belief, or it carries belief and confidence. And the players emit that one to the next, and that was the difference of, of the two halves. The pivot started getting on the ball, making better decisions, quicker decisions, confident decisions, and everyone else vibes off that. And, and the structure was the same in both halves. It was really the execution from one half to the next. Uh, Andreas Gomez got his first minutes for RSL in the season. Uh, what did you think from his time on the field? Yeah, no, I thought, uh, you know, I think it was always going to be a tough game to come into, um, you know, but, but uh, I, I think he did a good job. And I think the, the, the surface was difficult, as you saw, for the guys. Um, and it's a lot different than the turf that we play on here. But I think his ability to, you know, he had one or two very good defensive plays, which is not what we're expecting. But what is really important for that game with a scoreline as it is um, and the chips on the table. And so that was a really great thing to see from a young player to understand how important this moment is, what my role is in this moment, and actually making a play. And then offensively, um, it was, you know, he came into the game when you know, uh, the, the, we had secured uh, pretty much a scoreline and the guys weren't really moving beyond for fear of opening up gaps. So I think he, he handled himself really well and I think it's a great game for him to understand the speed of play the, the athleticism in our league, which is completely different than what you get in preseason games. When, it's, <clears throat> when he you know, eventually gets a start and it's not a game where he's needed, the team is needing to do a little bit more defensive work to see out that, that win, what do you expect to, how do you expect his contribution to shift? 
Um, well, again, I, I don't know that it shifts. I, I think it just there's there's an additional piece to that, which is what he does really well: running in behind, combination play in the middle of the field, and. To be honest with you, his decisions in the final third are really, really good for a young player. He's got, he always has a, his peripheral is always on, so slip passes or, and his finishing is really good with both feet. So, um, you know, I think he's an all around, he's a complete player. And, and it's just about, like you said, getting a start is different where you can work your way into the game. You can pay, you can kind of feel the spaces a little bit different. The spaces, you know, at times are going to be bigger, at times are going to be smaller, if or tighter. And his running in behind will, will be more evident in those games. I'm curious, did you learn anything about your team after your first win of the season and, uh, and just the fight? What, what did you learn about your guys? Uh, I, you know, I think our DNA is our DNA, and I think that's one thing that, that really sets us apart from, from a lot of different teams is really the, the, the camaraderie within the group, the, the fight within the group. Um, and, and like I said, when the first half, and I talk to the guys all the time, when your game plan individually and as a collective isn't going your way, how are you contributing to the game? And we always fall back on mentality and don't give up and don't stop running and don't quit on your teammate. And I thought that was evident throughout the first half and, and really from, from you know, the, the second half on, I thought it was a really great indication of, of, of mentality and character. Um, and that's what we needed to get the result. And that kind of leads into my next question. What is it that you like most about this group of guys right now? Is it that resilience or is there something maybe soccer-wise where you're kind of like, ah, we're, we're killing it in this category? Uh, well, listen, I think when we're confident and we're, and we're able to switch the point of attack and really drive at the defense and, and then the ball comes back and then there's another switch and we can engage in the wide areas and overload the wide areas um, and really attack from there, I think we're at our best. And there was a lot of great moments in the preseason um, and, and so again, when we did the recap today, it's just showing them when we do it well, we're, very, we're a very dangerous team. But, but again, I think at the end of the day, there's another team that's trying to yeah. oppose you. They're, 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 so it's not like you can even be good on the day and it might not happen, so who are you? And, and even in the, the last preseason game against Chicago, uh, where we lose the ball and you see six guys sprinting as hard as they can uh, to get behind the ball, to me, is, is the perfect uh, image of, of, of who we are as a group, and that's an unwavering desire to do whatever it takes to make sure we win the game. Oviedo and Savarino, <clears throat> and maybe it's going back to your point about you're trying to overload certain parts of the field, and it looked like you gave those guys a lot of freedom to move. Savarino dropped so deep. At times, it looked like he was playing Oviedo's spot, and Oviedo was tucked inside. How much of that is by design? How much of that is you guys have the freedom to read the moment? Yeah, on that side in particular, um, there's a lot more freedom, and and Sava really has that has that role to, to to be free to get on the ball. And and so on the left side, Oviedo sometimes pinches in, and he goes high and takes his position, where Sava can now drop wide to receive the ball and face the game. And uh, you know those guys have a really good understanding. Uh, of, of how the other one plays. And, and it's really about interpreting space. And so the communication, with, you know, the fact that they're both Latin, um, they can communicate uh, in, in a way that it, it feels seamless. But on that side, there's a lot more flexibility as far as getting Sav on the ball. So you take that flexibility and you have a Seattle team that just attacked down their right side relentlessly. How much is on these guys in this game to use that flexibility to attack but at the same time, you got to be structured to defend because Seattle looked awesome going down there. Yeah, no, they're a very dangerous team down the right side. Um, and, and again, I think nothing changes from us from a defensive standpoint. So what when we have the ball, we can't worry about losing the ball if you want to keep it. If you worry about losing the ball, then you'll never have the space and the width or the depth to be able to maintain the ball. So when we attack, we attack only with – in particular, if those two guys are rotating in a position, they rotate 100% confident that we're going to keep the ball. The pivots have more responsibility to set themselves up just in case it breaks down. So, again, I think at different points in the field, everyone has different responsibilities. But when those two are operating in advanced areas, that, their role isn't to worry about defending. It's worrying about how we're going to score a goal. These guys back here are now presetting their shape just in case the ball turns over. How do you think Zach McMahon handled that first game? What did you see from him? Uh, I thought he was awesome. 
you know, I, I think the, the d most difficult thing for a goalkeeper um, is, is the timing of the saves that he makes in coming up trumps. You know, I, I think he made a number of spectacular saves to keep us in the game. And again, goals change games. And, you know, we were, we were, it, we're all grateful to have a goalkeeper with a lot of experience that can manage moments and make the play necessary to keep the rest of the guys in there confident, full of belief so that we can find a way to win the game. One more, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. When you see a Seattle 4-0 win and then you guys are getting ready to go to their territory as a head coach, what immediately goes to your head? Like, okay, it's Monday. I know you're doing a recap today, but once you start <coughs> preparing for Seattle, what's the first thing where you're like, okay, we gotta do this? Let's go for it. Uh, nothing tactically, it's mindset. It's go for it. I mean, again, I think, what we learned from the Vancouver game is what happens when you're a little bit cautious, what happens when you're nervous, what happens when a couple things don't go your way. You don't like the way the first half feels. So I'm saying double down on what we did in the second half, which is go out and be brave, express yourself, great movement, believe when we have the ball, we're scoring goals. When we don't, we're stopping goals. And it's really the mindset of, okay, uh, they, they, they beat Colorado 4-0, they're a great team. And let's, let's go for it. What did you see in like those 10 minutes before Glad got the goal when we were really kind of knocking on the door there? I think, you know, Julio had a great chance. Saverino, their goalkeeper came up big. Marcelo's header. Um, what, where did that kind of come from? I guess? I, again, I think our uh, attacking shape in, in our attacking half was really good. And a lot of that has to do with the positioning of the pivots to be able to keep the ball pinned in along with our center backs doing a really good job in their half. If in, this, in the first half, there was so much doubt, our pivots were dropping deep. And so the ball would bounce in between our forwards and our pivots. They'd pick up the ball and it'd be an 80 yard scramble. So the adjustments we made at halftime where our pivots have to be anticipating that ball bouncing higher up the field. And how do we close that space? And you can, you can organize it a number of ways, but what's the communication? What's the mindset? And so when those chances weren't coming off and we put in a good ball for cross and the ball got headed out, we were in positions to get it. And so when, you, when your attacking shape is good in, in that final third, you build momentum by keeping them pinned in. And that takes focus, that takes communication, that takes energy. And that, those were things that we weren't doing in, in, in the first half. Um, is that what gives Demir like, the freedom to be in the wide areas? Because like, I was just maybe surprised to see him out there in a few different sequences. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I think in, in the preseason, what we talk about is very s structured, don't move beyond position so that everyone understands what the role of each p p particular position uh, is asked to do. Now we get to a point where we've been doing it so much where if Demir goes out to the wide channel, Sava comes inside, they both understand the roles and the responsibilities of those two players in those positions. So again, with the structure, it's in the reason why we killed it in the preseason and hit on it every day was to get a really good understanding. And then from there, there's creativity. If everyone does whatever they want and without any acceptance of any role, then it just becomes chaos. And nobody knows where anyone's meant to be. So you can't play quick because you don't know that that guy's going to be there. Where in this case, if Dami's wide and Saba's inside, they're both cognizant of what the roles are and the expectations are. And then last question is a little more philosophical, but with the snow and the turf and a rough first half and then the travel delays and all the things that are out of control, like, is there something in the DNA of this group and the resiliency that allows them to just tune out those variables and be so calm about that stuff? Yeah, you know, I, I think that, that's another thing we hit on in preseason. We talk a lot about life and philosophy and the parallels with sport and life. And one of the things that uh, I, I read not too long ago that, uh, that I've been sharing with the group and that we're seeing every day is, as human beings, we always expect things to go our way. And when they don't, we have an emotional response to that, usually to the negative, which is completely opposite of how you should look at life. Life never goes your way. And when it does, you should be grateful. But because you know it doesn't go your way, you got to be strong in the mind to accept it or change it. Those are the two, those are the two things, those are the only two ways to affect it. And so I think it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress, but I think the more 
um, hurdles we overcome throughout the season, the better we'll be prepared for those moments of, of gratitude. Because like, you know, two in the morning when the gate agent says that the flight's not leaving, we've all been in those situations and there's anger and groaning and whatever and nobody reacted. It was so kind of surreal. Yeah, no, and again, I think it's, it's, it's a work of the group where we're, we're constantly talking about these situations and you know, then we had a couple guys, man, maybe we get a day off tomorrow. And I said, we have to suffer. Like, this is all suffering. This, is, this, this whole life is suffering. And it's really the people that persevere and evolve are the people that look at life as just a huge problem and you become a constant problem solver. And in order to do that, you must be stoic you must not be so emotionally charged to everything that goes your way or doesn't go your way. And I think that's just another reflection of it. Uh, your flight's canceled. Let's go back to the hotel. And, uh, you know, again, just super proud of, of, of what these you know, young men are, are really being able to achieve and hopefully take away after their careers are done a little bit about life, too, because they're going to understand it more as, as they get older. So you just put on a second or third jacket when the dome is open in February. You don't think that's why you have a dome for February. I uh, know. It was freezing in there. <laughs> it was absolutely frigid. I, was, I had like triple layers in there. Yeah, yeah it was nuts. <laughs> huh, what are you going to do? <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so yeah, thanks.